Hello, welcome back. Today we're talking all about mortgages. Should you go for a two or a five year fixed mortgage? For those of you that don't know me, my name is Marco. I'm a portfolio landlord, property investor, developer, and mentor. And I'm very passionate about helping people invest in property. Now, today we're talking all about should you go for a two or five year mortgage? So please make sure you stay tuned to the very end of this video because we'll be discussing several points that include rates, risk, cash flow, your future plans for the property, early repayment charges, the time and cost to mortgage, and also we'll talk about releasing equity. So should you opt for a two or five year mortgage is a question that I get asked all the time. So I thought it's a really good idea for me to make a video about this question and uh, simply I can paste the link every time someone asks me a question of this nature. Now, first of all, I must say this video is really aimed at the buy to let investment type property rather than you know your own living residential purchase. So yes, there are some similarities, but this video is really aimed for property investors. Let's come on to the first consideration and the first topic to discuss here today, which are rates. Now, interest rates are obviously crucial to the mortgage and the cost that you're going to be paying on a monthly basis. So you can use some very easy logic such as, well, if you think rates are low at the moment, maybe you want to take advantage of those low rates and fix for five years for a longer five years compared to two years. Where, however, let's flip that on its head. Let's say you think rates are higher and rates are going to come down in the near future. Well, then you may want to fix for two years. And after two years, you'd hope that rates have come down and you can utilize that lower rate. So that's one very easy way of thinking that easy logic to follow. However, I must note that lenders are very smart. Lenders, you know, anticipate in the future and they'll price their products accordingly. So when they're pricing a five year product, they're, you know, anticipating what that rate is going to be in the five years to come. So, you know, don't think they're just looking at the current rate now. They're not, they're always looking ahead. So that's a very little bit on rates, but let's come on to risk, which really is such a key element and a crucial part we need to discuss right now. Now, this is really important because it depends where you lie on the risk spectrum. You know, if you are the type of investor would like to plan very far ahead, you know, you want to plan everything in detail and as far ahead as you possibly can and minimize your risk, well, you may opt for a five-year mortgage because what you can do then if you're going for a five-year fixed term mortgage, you know for the next 60 months exactly what your mortgage mortgage costs are going to be. However, if you'd like to take a bit more of a calculated risk, maybe you could opt for a two year fixed term mortgage. And you know, maybe you're taking a slightly higher risk, but what you think is that within 20 or months time, lending rates will have come down and maybe you can utilize that and lock in for a longer five year fix at maybe and potentially a lower rate. So risk is really important. And one thing I just want to add in terms of risk, which not a lot of people talk about, and it's really important that I'm giving you an investor point of view, not a mortgage broker point of view. I'm definitely not a mortgage broker. I know lots about mortgages, but I'm a property investor. And here's one thing where I can really add value. And the question is, if you have other properties in your portfolio and they're on fixed term mortgages, when do those fixed terms come up for renewal and, and expire? Because if you've got lots of fixed terms expiring all at the same time, well, in my opinion, that's a slightly higher risk because you may be forced to then refinance because you don't want to stay on that expensive variable rate when the mortgage lapses. You're forced to refinance finance all of those properties at the same time. And if rates are a lot higher than what you had anticipated, you know, when you purchased the property or when you refinance two or five years ago, you could be stung. So here's the thing that I like to do. I like to stagger my refinances and stagger my fixed term mortgage expiry dates across my portfolio. I really don't want more than 20% of my properties coming up for refinance or that fixed term expiring within that year. You know, especially I don't want more than 50% because if you've got more than 50% of your properties coming up and the mortgage expires in that particular year, or all of a sudden, if rates have jumped up remarkably, which they have done in the past year, your cash flow could seriously be impacted here. So again, spread out the risk and diversify, you know, depending on what your goals are, let's say you want to reach 10, 20, 30, 40 properties, whatever that goal is, you know, stagger these fixed term expiry dates, maybe only have a couple come up in one particular year. Now let's come on to the third variable and topic to discuss, which is cash flow. And cash flow is king, especially when we're renting out property, we always want to make sure we're in positive cash flow. You know, I know people and investors now that are in negative cash flow because rates have increased. They purchased the property or they've mortgaged the property without sufficient margin of safety and all of a sudden they find themselves in negative cash flow. So it's really important, cash flow is king. And this, you know, follows on very nicely from risk. So, you know, if you're the type of person that wants to minimize your risk as far as possible and you're very conservative, well, maybe opting for a five-year fixed-term product may be best suited for you because you know exactly for those 60 months 
what you're going to be paying. Whereas if you want to take on slightly more risk and you've got significant margin of safety and you can absorb increases in your mortgage costs, because what you could do is say, right, well, if we're going for a two year mortgage and this two years comes up and maybe rates are a little higher, well, you know, we've got lots of margin of safety. We can afford a rate increase and yeah, we're willing to pay that price and take on that high risk. And if rates do come down in those two years, great. If they don't and they go up, well, we've got that nice buffer. We've got that nice margin of safety and we're okay with that. So the killer question here is, do you have the capacity to absorb the increase in mortgage costs? If you do, you could opt for a two year and, and do the slightly riskier option. If not, you can go for the five year, less riskier option. So that was rates, risk and cash flow. But let's come on to some other really important considerations. You know, what are your future plans for the property? Really important. Are you looking to potentially sell this property within a certain number of years? Are you looking to maybe withdraw equity and take money out of the property again within maybe 12 or 24 months, something of that nature? Well, this is really important because if we're fixing for two or five years, there's going to be what's called early repayment charges. And this is the fees and the charges we have to pay to exit that mortgage early. So let's say, for example, we've taken out a five year mortgage, but actually something's changed and we want to sell the property within that five years. Well, to sell it, we'll have to pay that early repayment charge. So here's the question. What are your future plans for the property? And try and marry up your future plans with the mortgage product. So, you know, if you're looking to hold, you know, indefinitely for as long as you live for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, well, you could quite easily go on a five year mortgage and that's fine. But actually, if you're looking to do something with it, maybe you're looking to sell the property or refinance to release equity, maybe a two year fix is better suited because after two years, you can then, you know, approach the lender or a new, or a new lender and say, right, well, the property is worth more. We've also done some work to it and you'd like to take out some of the equity that you have added. So if you are planning to release equity, you know, I certainly wouldn't fix for five years, maybe fix for two years, especially if you bought it below market value in the first instance and you're not relying on a refurb to push up that value. That being said, as I'm recording this video in June 2023, surveyors and value is a very cautious at the moment. You know, I've, I've had three valuations done this month so far and I can tell you they're being very, very conservative with their valuations, which maybe gives you an indication of what's to come and what they're being told to do on their side. So yes, if you are fixing for two years and you're hoping to see capital growth in the UK in 2023, you know, in the next two years, I really wouldn't factor in that much capital growth. Again, let's be on the conservative side. We really don't know where the economy is going to go. You know, some people are predicting a slight downfall, others are predicting, you know, an increase in property prices. So no one really knows what's going to happen. And don't be relying purely on the capital growth to increase the value of your property. This is why you should be buying below market value, because this means you have significant equity from day one of owning the property. And you're not relying on capital growth. You're not even relying on a refurb to increase the value of the property. Now, before we come on to the costs to mortgage, and we're talking about time and things of that nature, if you're looking to find out a bit more about buy to let mortgage, I've got a really good video. It's got lots of great feedback. I'll link to it into the in the description. Here's a picture of the thumbnail. It's a very generic video, but it explains buy to let mortgage in depth. So we're going to finish this video with two really important factors, which is first, we're going to address the costs involved, and then we're going to come on to the time. So first of all, let's talk about costs. So whether you're opting for a two or a five year mortgage, there are costs you have to incur. First of all, you're going to have what's called a product fee. So this is the fee that the lender charges for the mortgage and for the mortgage product. Uh, secondly, you may have what's called a, a legal fee. So your lender may will want you to pay their legal fees. Also, you may have what's called a valuation fee for someone to come out and value the property on behalf of the lender. And of course, you should be paying your mortgage broker a fee for the work they are doing for you. So again, there are lots of fees and all these fees add up. So here's a question for you. Do you want to be paying these fees every two years or do you want to be paying these fees every five years? You know, I know the answer. For me, if I'm just purely looking at the costs and the fees for taking out a mortgage, well, I'm certainly going to opt for a five year mortgage because I don't want to be paying these fees every two years. I'd rather be paying them every five years, obviously. And now let's come nicely on to time. Well, for any of you that have obtained a mortgage or pushed a refinance through, you know it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of admin as well. And again, we can just apply the exact same logic. Do you want to be putting in all this time, effort and energy every two years or every five years? Again, I definitely know the answer to that. You know, again, I've got three refinances going through at the moment, as I've just mentioned earlier in the video, and I've probably put in at least two hours per property, you know, in time and admin to get everything right for the lender. So, you know, this is why, you know, I'm probably more on the side of fixing for longer if you can, in, if you can afford to. However, I'm going to contradict myself. That being said, when I started in property, I was extremely aggressive and I was fixing for two years because I know I was buying at really good prices. I could refinance in two 
two years, take out some of their equity and invest that in the next deal. And I certainly wouldn't be where I am here today if I hadn't undergone that strategy where I was fixing for two years and refinancing. So yes, you know, I'm getting a bit slower, I'm getting a bit older and I'm much preferring a five year mortgage now because I'm in no rush to make more money. But you know, me 10 years ago, I was certainly fixing for two years. Well, Marco, what shall I do now? Should I fix for two or five years? Well, again, go for all these points that I've listed in this video and try and weigh up the pros and cons. And I'm sure you'll be able to answer the question yourself, should you fix for two or five years? However, if you are still stuck, I highly, highly recommend that you speak to a mortgage broker. Speak to a mortgage broker who specializes in buy to let property because they'll be able to add value and advise from a professional point of view. Now, I'm certainly no mortgage broker. I know a lot about mortgages, but I can put you in touch with the mortgage broker that I know, use, like, and trust. So if you want to speak to him, go to my website, www.ms7.uk, click on use our suppliers and fill out the form and I'll put you in touch with him. Now, I hope you've really enjoyed this video and you're closer to answering your questions should you fix for two or five years. If you found it useful, please do comment below. And for my regular subscribers, you'll notice that, you know, we're finally back in the study now. We're, the renovation is nearly finished. I just need to finish populating the shelves. Um, but this is a really nice space now. We've got some really amazing guests lined up to share their property wisdom with us all. So thanks very much for your custom. I hope you've enjoyed the video and all the very best with your property investing day. Goodbye.